I'm Mathieu Dupont. I'm an architect uh, working in France as a, an archi as a freelance architect. Uh, and I've been using Blender for, I think, more than 10 years now. Uh, I'm teaching it in a... Oh, sorry. Okay, here? Okay. I don't move anymore. Uh, so I'm teaching Blender in the in a school of architecture in Grenoble in France, and I'm teaching it uh, to some firms, uh, architects, and things like that. Uh, so today I will not uh, talk about uh, archivis, about visualization, because it's not my main job. Uh, even if Blender is very good at uh, rendering, especially with cycles. So here with the light, I don't know if we see very well the the, the quality. You can have a photorealistic rendering or cartoonish rendering, anything you want. Uh, Blender is very capable of making any type of images. But that's not the topic of today. So you will see examples of the abilities of rendering, but I will focus my, uh, my talk about uh, Blender as a design tool. So uh, how you can use Blender to design directly in 3D. So not exactly what uh, a lot of people use. Uh, it, they have the idea in their head, they draw it on a sketch on paper, and then they model it. I'm trying to use Blender to model directly in 3D and to teach my students to use it directly in 3D. So there will be two parts. One that I call technical design, which is uh, the more realistic work I use in my daily work, and then the free form or conceptual uh, design that is more uh, funny, but less usable in, uh, in buildings. So for technical designs, uh, you can use Blender. Uh, there are a lot of tools that help you to design uh, with precision. Uh, so among them, you have snapping that has improved a lot in the last years. So now you have a lot of tools to snap one vertex to other vertices to align things. It's very handy. Uh, you have now numerical entries. So when you make a, a transformation, for example, you want to move a point, and you will type, uh, I want it to move. Uh, for example, you can type uh, formulas, mathematic formulas. So for example, you, you can type, I move it along the x axis uh, three times cosinus 45 centimeters. And you can enter, and this is from the last uh, 2.7 version. And this is really handy because you don't have to have a calculator. You can just type anything you want, uh, sinus, cosinus, uh, formulas, and uh, you have Boolean tools that now are very powerful and can be used. Uh, bevel, array modifiers. So this is uh, completely uh, designed in Blender. Uh, so here, uh, I would say it's uh, the homemade features versus uh, the usability. So you don't have a big button uh, to allow you to uh, make, for example, a frame, timber frame, or things like that. But Blender is so easy to use once you know it that you can model almost anything. So for technical details, I'm not using uh, the, the, the architectural software like ArchiCAD. I'm using uh, Blender. So for example, this is a real project. I make generally the first sketches with the clients in Blender very fast, uh, just the, the basic shapes. There is no inside wall so that we can choose what is the general shape of the building. Then the plans uh, cuts, everything is done in architectural software. Here is Archicad, so it's not uh, open source, it's not free, it's, uh, so I will not talk about that. And then I used uh, Blender to model all the, the, um, the wooden frame uh, so that we can use it uh, to put straw bales in it. So I had to design to check that uh, the, the frame is uh, uh, so that we don't have to cut straw bales to put it inside. So everything is modeled in Blender. And then I can, this image, I did it to explain uh, the way it's, uh, it's built. Uh, it's done in Blender too. And then the house is finished now. And uh, you see just to show you here, um, here you have straw bales. Sorry. 
here you have straw bales, and the straw bales are 60 centimeter wide. So all the wooden frame must be 60 centimeter wide. The windows are uh, at space so that we don't have to cut the straw bales. And this doesn't happen every day, so they, they choose my image as a front cover of a French uh, magazine, so I was very proud. I didn't make the, the layout, so <laughs> no comment. Uh, second part is more about uh, how, uh, especially for students, how to make them open their minds and uh, forget about the pencil. Not saying that pencil is not a, a very good tool, but you can model directly in 3D and make some various forms. This is the type of exercises I'm making them uh, study. So here's the first example. Uh, this is still quite technical. Uh, so, for this, I will try to make a small demonstration, hoping it will work. Generally, it doesn't work. So, in fact, you have, um, and I don't have a mouse, a mouse so, uh, you have one, thank you. I have no more batteries in my wireless mouse. Never trust a wireless mouse. So for the, the people who know Blender, there is a one curve. And uh, I designed the, the shape of the frame. And then I, I add a modifier, array modifier, that will duplicate the frame along the curve automatically. If I make the curve longer, it will add more frames. And then I made, uh, I made this uh, step several times for the wooden frame, for the windows, and for the metallic frame that is outside. So you can see maybe, uh, if I remove this one, this is the wooden frame. And the wooden frame is just one basic Bezier curve. So I can just uh, move any point of the Bezier curves, and it will adjust the complete frame and if I add the metallic on the windows, uh -huh. okay. And then I, I can adjust uh, the, the size to make it bigger. So this, this allows you to really model the, the thing in a, directly in 3D in re, almost real time with a, a powerful computer. And this is the final image, so I say that we won't talk about uh, visualization, but this was rendered in the Blender internal. So I, I designed the, the structural components, and then I sculpted it in 3D uh, to put it inside the, the place to, to make it uh, fit the place. So here is another, another example. I cannot make a demonstration of this one because it's too heavy on the, on the processor. So here is a, I will talk while uh, the video is playing. Uh, it was a, a pedestrian bridge and uh, it's made of uh, kerto. I don't know if you know, it's a wooden uh, a plywood, something like a very strong plywood. Uh, and the aim was to have those uh, plywood planes not parallel, so that once, when you are inside the pedestrian bridge, sometimes it opens more and sometimes it closes. So I use more or less the same technique. I use a plane that is duplicated along the curves, and then this plane with a Boolean modifier is cutting uh, a, gen a shape, uh, something, a shape like a bone. Some people told me it's mammoth bones, so I don't know. And then the, the aim was that in some place you see the, the bridge is almost transparent when you are parallel to the, to the uh, slices, and in some places it, it feels like it's, it's not transparent at all. So everything is designed uh, with modifiers. So if I move one uh, point of the shape, everything adapts. Uh, not real time on this computer, so I cannot make uh, the demonstration here. 
So then, uh, it's just that when you talk about 3D, uh, you have to talk about 3D printing today. Uh, why I talk about 3D printing very fast, because there is a talk uh, just after me, uh, is that because it's not 3D printing today, it's for very small parts, but at um, mid-term, we can imagine that really we can print any form we design. So all the forms I was teaching to my students that are just, let's say, uh, uh, funny things, but that we cannot build today, we can imagine that very soon it will be buildable, first with small parts together and then with big parts. So we can build today, I can print a Christmas tree uh, lights, I can build uh, small models with my 3D printer, but this type of shapes, uh, we can imagine that in some time, it's, uh, we can uh, design it uh, with a uh, long time. Okay. So first example is uh, I like to work uh, with the reference of Gaudi, uh, a Spanish uh, architect that used the rope. When you take a rope, on the, it gives the shape of the perfect uh, static uh, arc. And as in Blader, you have a, you have a, um, a soft body simulation uh, engine. You can use it. You model anything, and then you say uh, the red part on the on the the model are elastic, and Blender will calculate the shape automatically. And then you can print this. Okay, it's not supposed to do that. Okay, it's just you see the the printing of the of the model, and then the the finished models. So here. Another example of the way to use uh, modifiers to to design uh, more or less randomly. So I will open the the file. I think it's this one. So here I use a, a modifier. In in fact, the the shape itself is like that. Uh -huh. Okay, this is my basic shape. It's even more like that. Um, sorry, okay. This is a very basic shape, very easy to, to change. You have few faces. And then I will use uh, modifiers to... Uh, I should have not hide, hidden the modifiers. Sorry, here it is. So that with only a few faces, for example, I select this one, I extrude it, and you see that it's building the building, we can say that, automatically. And the, the size of the windows, the shape of the windows, uh, they are assigned with a modifier, uh, which is a, a, vert, uh, a weight paint modifier that is applying uh, weight paint uh, different painting uh, weight to each vertex randomly so that every uh, every point has a different rate so that the, the size of the, the, the structure varies randomly. So that way you can you can use make the shape very easily and design anything you want so the, this one is not very beautiful but Okay. And what is interesting with this uh, random um, weight modifier is that if I make duplicates of this structure, you see that the, the size of the windows, or let's call it windows, they are always different because each of them is, uh, is different. So there is a, another example. Uh, with this uh, soft body simulation, I use it to to build. Um, I use it on a plane. In fact, basically, it's a plane. I use a, a tool that is called cell fracture that breaks the plane apart, like if it was a broken glass. And then I use this with the same uh, soft body simulation, so that it's just like an elastic uh, tissue that will uh, take a shape. And then one more modifier, that is the wireframe modifier, to change that into a structural shape. 
And then you just let Blender calculate. Okay, you spend some hours tweaking uh, the render results. And so that's the, it's somehow, par sorry, parametrical design. I think I don't have so much time, so I will, okay, this one I will go very fast. Here, uh, I had to make a, a 3D workshop uh, so that every children can, in half an hour, print uh, a small house without knowing 3D. So for that, I use uh, what uh, we call uh, shape keys in Blender. Uh, so you define some shape keys. Uh, basic shapes, and then they can uh, choose the amount of each ch each shape with those sliders you see on the left of the screen, with names in French that are quite understandable: flat roof, uh, sloppy roof, uh, east uh, wall, uh, west wall, uh, <coughs> round, and things like that. And uh, this is a render. Okay, this is supposed to be a movie. Of the rendering, okay, we, the movie is not working. So no movie. Uh, so the, the the children were just adjusting sliders, mm -hmm. and each of them got his his very own house, his very own mix. Okay, it's not really designed. They didn't design the building. They choose between a mix of different designs. And the video is okay. It's this one. So here you will see the different basic shapes that they can mix and how they can mix them together. And with just adjusting the sliders. So let's go faster. And then this is random mix of the of the uh, different shapes. So, for example, for a lazy architect, he could design uh, three typical houses, and then every new client, he just mix them and say, ah, this is your very own house. Okay, we are not supposed to work like that, but... And then, uh, what is funny with 3D printing, and it's for that I asked the question, uh, is that you can print anything, any form. So, this is uh, designed with uh, procedural textures that are uh, acting on displacement and moving the geometry so that you can get the shapes you want by mixing di different uh, textures with a nodal uh, and you can use the colors of the texture to adjust the displacement but the color too. So I would have liked to make a demonstration but I think I will have no time. Uh, so that I let you time for the questions. I have two minutes. So just as a conclusion, uh, why do we teach to the students to explore, have fun, and try uh, different shapes? Is that if you don't do it when you have time, uh, the, when you have a deadline, you will not. It's too late to try to innovate and find new new forms. So this is. The same type of displacement with a modifier that is animated, so the the size of the, uh, the parameters of the parametric uh, texture of the procedural texture are changing uh, with time. So I think uh, you have one minute to ask question if you have questions while the movie is. Uh... Anybody has a question? Hmm? So, so uh, how was the experience with the children? Uh, for the 3D printing? Yes. It was very, very nice. Yeah. In fact, they, they learned what is a 3D software. Okay, what does it mean, 3D? They learned how to move in 3D. 
and uh, they were very happy to have their own. Uh, they uh, they didn't feel like okay, like my client, I said, would be cheated if I. They really feel like it was their own house. And what was very funny is that uh, they were leaving and coming back half an hour later to to take the prints, and they always recognized their own house, saying, "Okay, this is mine." We we had a lot of stickers with the name of the children, but they were always recognizing, "This is my house." So it's continuing. Uh, Next question. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Sorry.